been an interesting few days so far as free speech concerns are concerned. There's three larger stories that I think are illustrative of what's going on overall and, and which I think we can delve into to kind of give us a snapshot of where we are regarding free expression, particularly online free expression. So I want to go over those quickly. Now, uh, Count Dankula, Mark Meachin, will be familiar to most of you, probably most of the people watching this channel in particular will be familiar with him. He's the guy that uh, taught his pug, or his girlfriend's pug, to Zieg Heil and to respond to the phrase, well, I can't say it or I'll get demonetized, but um, administering poison to a certain uh, racial religious subgroup, shall we say. And ever since then, ever since his, his trial and his ludicrous conviction for making a bad taste joke using a pug, um, Ever, ever since then, he's just been under constant and ongoing attack because the only way that's really left for him to make a living, to participate in society, is through his YouTube channel, through his comedy, through being essentially a, a free speech martyr. It's the only path that's been left clear to him. And he's come in for a lot of criticism because he has talked to people with far-right views and, and so on. A li little unfairly, I think, because they're the only people that will talk to him and if he's to be consistent and honest about his free speech principles then he has to be open to talking to anybody that the far left hasn't taken advantage of the same opportunity as the far right uh, well that's that's their own problem their own lookout you can't do that and then complain that he only ever talks to, to far right figures or joins UKIP which is regrettable but however regrettable I think his genuine political leanings are he's not a Nazi but anyway he was invited on to a uh, BBC Scotland new digital service he was invited on to do a, a panel show on there about um, offensive humor the very thing that he's been convicted for the thing he's something of an expert on so you think his perspective on the ludicrousness of the Scottish court system, how it came after him, all the rest of it. Yeah, he seems like a good bet to be someone to come on and talk about that sort of thing. But this came out recently that this was the case, and so a, a huge uproar and mob attack started on the BBC to get that removed. And it has been. They, they've caved completely to the, to the demands. Uh, initially, they were just going to cut his parts from the show, uh, but the outrage continued, so now they're cutting the episodes that he was in. Now, a lot of people have piled on to this saying, good, he should never have given, been given a platform and so on, but it's patently obvious from reading their comments that they either haven't seen the original video that got him into trouble, or that they're being willfully and deliberately dishonest about it because it's obvious that it's a joke it's patently obvious that it's a joke and anyone in their remotely right mind who goes and looks at that video while they might agree it's bad taste they don't perhaps find it funny but anyone going and looking at that and seeing what he actually did will I think be left in no doubt that his conviction is horseshit. You know, they have him on for a show to explore the issues of cancelled culture, deplatforming, censorship, the way in which the law is being used as a blunt instrument to silence people. And what do they do? They prove him right far more obviously and far more eloquently than he could on a panel show. It's just so self defeating. And it's only going to push people to the right because, like I said, anyone that goes and looks at what he actually did, what he actually said, it's going to be patently obvious to them that he is not a Nazi or a Nazi sympathizer or whatever else. And then, like plenty of other people, they're going to start wondering, well, if they're wrong about him, if they're wrong about me because they you know, call them Nazis, maybe they're wrong about other people. 
maybe they're wrong about the obnoxious views of Tommy Robinson or any of these you know organizations that are out to defend Europe or whatever else so this is really just playing into the hands of the genuine far right and so on by making them appear to be much more sympathetic and diluting the the brand of calling someone racist or far right or whatever it's just it, it it's completely counterproductive now the second case is on the other side of the political spectrum and this is quite interesting because it relates to to twitter and whether you're on twitter or not it's quite important if you want to stay up on news if you want to participate in the culture war or just keep tabs on it it's it's a journalist platform more than perhaps anything else if you want to get on the news you know you can get do so by tweeting at somebody it's it's really powerful in that way and there are a lot of right-wing trolls on there but there's also a lot of left-wing trolls on there and there's people that occupy that kind of activist semi-troll status on both sides as well now up until this point the primary pri the primary recipients of out of hand censorship on Twitter as a platform and most other platforms has been people to the right and it's everything from garden variety conservatives and traditionalists who for all I think their views are, are repugnant should be allowed to speak all, all the way through to the genuine far right who again I still think should be allowed to speak even though I find their views repugnant oh, up to you know calls for violence that that sort of thing um, but now it's affecting the far left and they are kicking off and they are screaming and kicking their feet a particular prolific blogger I don't know what it is about Swindon but this uh, this this blogger this commentator this Twitter activist semi troll Rachel Swindon was taken off Twitter account suspended it's unclear precisely why it may have been for retweeting an article from the mainstream media which seems odd but that may have qualified as as hate speech under Twitter's definitions that's concerning and or it may be for using a common phrase the same one that I was recently temporarily suspended for um, enough rope to hang themselves there were some people have cast illusions that that might be the reason but everyone kicking up a stink kicking up a fuss suddenly now all these people on the far left who have worked really hard to try and silence Count Dankula, Dankula you know momentum uh, hope not hate groups like this they're all up in arms to defend Rachel Swindon which is weird because she's controversial precisely because she promotes anti-semitic tweets and so on a lot of the same things that the right has been censored for and that the the pseudo left has cheered on but now that it's come for them and apparently this has been happening to a lot of further left accounts as well now that it's happening to them suddenly now it's a travesty of justice and shouldn't be allowed to happen suddenly now they understand the importance of free speech the fact is that most culture warriors on either side couldn't give two tugs of a dead dog's cock for free expression or free speech all they care is that the opposition gets silenced while they be allowed to continue to speak it doesn't work like that none of this works like that free speech you don't have to defend people making kind of milk toast sentiments you don't have to defend people with uncontroversial opinions you have to defend people whether you agree with them or not with obnoxious opinions with bad takes with bad ideas those are the people you have to protect which brings me to the final instance here uh, which kind of gives me an, a, an opportunity to stick the boot in to some people who've been making my life difficult recently so uh, recently I did a video on Tommy Robinson who I regard as a con artist and, and a chancer for all he's been right about a, a couple of things and I'm concerned about people being exploited by him defending him giving him money when he's just not an honest actor um, now the other day uh, another youtuber uh, a left-wing activist worth a follow to keep tabs on I think brother neuro he goes by on on YouTube um, he was selected in um, accordance with some other people to deliver 
uh, I believe it's a defamation suit, so a legal letter informing him, to Tommy Robinson, for which they went to Tommy's house, uh, accompanied by police to ensure that there were no shenanigans, and delivered the letter. Now, great pains were taken to not reveal the location, to blank out addresses and so on, to have the police there to escort, to make sure that there were no shenanigans. But from the way in which the, the hard right on YouTube and the way in which Tommy Robinson's followers, his, his acolytes and so on, have kicked off, you'd think he went there and, and beat Tommy's wife and children with a, with a broken bottle or something. That's how absurd it is. And they've taken steps to try and silence and bully off social media. Brother Neuro, they've gone after his YouTube channel with endless comments and downvotes and, and so on, expressing their rage in any way they can. They've tried to hack into his Facebook account, all the rest of it. These are the very same people who were arguing to me a handful of days ago that they really believed in, in free speech and uh, your robust argument and, and all the rest of it. It's just the, the hypocrisy is obvious. So to, to round all this off, I guess, the problem is, I think, that when it comes to Corbyn or when it comes to Tommy Robinson, people don't care about free speech or free expression at all. They just want to be able to say what they want and they don't want the other side to be able to say what they want. And they're so utterly enamored of Dear Leader that they will forgive anything that Dear Leader does, no matter how stupid it is, whether it's visiting a mosque in the midst of a massive anti-semitism row or whether it's punching someone or bragging that you can score drugs wherever you are or using racial epithets or or whatever else none of these people give a single toss about free expression whatsoever and it's all about beating the other side zang <laughs>